Well, hello there. How are you guys doing? Welcome back to Rule of Two Reviews. So lovely, as always, to see your faces. So every once in a while, I'm lucky enough to have an opportunity to talk about something that is non-Nintendo related. Obviously, I mostly talk about Nintendo stuff in this channel because they're my favorite company and it's a really great time to be a Nintendo fan with the Switch looming just around the corner, which is crazy to think about. It's like five weeks away, the official January event reveal, and it's gonna be awesome. But I do, of course, love my Sonys and my Microsofts and all that PC madness. You know, I'm a big fan of everything in gaming, so it's really cool when something comes along that really gives me a good opportunity to talk about something that isn't entirely focused on Nintendo. What I'm talking about today is, of course, Sony's PlayStation Experience event, which is happening in, a, I believe, Las Vegas, right? Isn't it? Las Vegas, Nevada? Um, which is happening right now this weekend. Earlier today, they, of course, had their official conference for the PlayStation Experience for 2016, which is akin to something like an E3 press conference you would see from Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo and the like. And it's a really exciting time. I want to say this is the third year since they've started the PSX. Is that correct, you guys? I'm pretty sure it's year number three. And I love it. I think it's cool that they're doing this. I mean, the quality of what's shown is obviously going to vary from year to year based on what's happening, what they have in the works, what's available to be shown, and all these different things. But the simple fact that they're doing it, I think, is great. It's another annual thing and event in gaming that we have to look forward to. Obviously, you have to kind of be a Sony fan or into PlayStation to be excited for it, but it's something. For any of us old school gamers, and especially us old Nintendo gamers, it probably reminds us of Space World, back when Nintendo used to have their own annual event outside of the CES show, which eventually would become E3. So I think it's really cool that Sony does it. I would love to see the other guys, especially Nintendo, do it. Maybe we get that Space World back Nintendo. Eh, come on, guys. You know we want it. So anyway, the PSX uh, conference did happen today, and there was a lot of really cool stuff out of it. So I wanted to discuss one main thing, and then just a quick summation of everything else that happened. For what it's worth, I'm not, like, reviewing the show, because I did not watch the show. I was working. I work early in the office every Saturday morning, so I actually forgot it was happening today. I didn't watch the show, the events, the presentation the pacing. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. What I did manage to do is see the games that were announced and understand the trailers and, and all that stuff. So that's really what I'm discussing is what actual games were announced um, and what trailers and stuff happened. That's what I want to discuss. So anyway, let's move beyond all this PSX stuff and talk about the real goods, the meat and potatoes of the show and that I wanted to mostly talk with you guys about today. And that was the big announcement, the final reveal and confirmation and trailer for The Last of Us, officially titled Last of Us Part 2, the actual sequel is real. Oh my freaking god, I'm so excited. So I've talked about it a couple of times, but man, The Last of Us is hands down one of my top five favorite games of all time. Probably top three. And that list is always shifting, just like it is probably for anyone. But seriously, you guys, The Last of Us is that good. I'm going to discuss what they showed in the trailer, so spoiler warning, of course, for anyone out there who watches this and maybe hasn't played Last of Us or seen or experienced the story and maybe still cares and doesn't, doesn't want it spoiled. I'm going to have to kind of do that a little bit to discuss what they showed in the trailer today. They basically closed the show, as I understand, with The Last of Us uh, Part 2 which makes a lot of sense. It's the big Naughty Dog thing. We've been talking about it for years since the first Last of Us came out. When is the sequel going to come out? It's inevitable. We know you've got to do it. Are you going to continue with Joel and Ellie? Are you going to do something different? Is it going to be on the PS4? What the hell is going on? And, you know, they finally showed it to us, and it looks great. They only showed us a CG trailer, but for something like a Last of Us or what Naughty Dog does, I think that's completely fine. It gets the idea across well enough, and that's okay. The big thing, the big takeaway is the fact that we are continuing with Joel and Ellie. And that makes me so excited, you guys. It's exactly what I would have wanted from a sequel. Obviously, there's a case to be made for how another Last of Us game could have been made following completely different people. And that probably would have been great and fine. And I would have been very excited if we were in the same world where the Cordyceps kind of did what they did and people were what they were and the clickers operated how they did. That would have been fine. But you know what? I was way too invested in those characters, the people that they knew and interacted with, and their specific relationship, to not want to see that continue. You could have done the artful thing and say, hey, we wrapped that story up the way we wanted to, obviously with a cliffhanger, but we did what we wanted to do and told the story we wanted to tell, so we didn't really want to continue with Joel and Ellie. And, you know, we wanted to just leave it the way it is and move on with something else. And, like, yes, that would have been, like, the artful kind of thing to do, but I really didn't want that here. So it just does my heart so much joy to see that we actually do have Joel and Ellie back. 
Some things are going on. Some time has passed, obviously, because you can tell Ellie is quite a bit older. And we get to see their story continue. And I just am so wonderfully crazy happy about that. A couple of pieces of information have come out since they basically showed it off this morning by the time I'm now recording. The two main takeaways that I heard confirmed is that you will play as Ellie as opposed to Joel in this game. Very interesting twist, but I'm totally okay with that. Even though I'm going to miss playing as Joel. Um, the other thing is they confirmed Ellie is 19. So is that not a five-year gap? Was she 14 in the first game? You guys might have to remind me. It's been a while. So it's been some odd years. She was somewhere but probably between 13 and 16. Oh, maybe she was 16. So it's been a handful of years. She's 19. That much we know for sure. 19 in this new game. Uh, you play as Ellie primarily or entirely throughout the game, which is a different experience for sure. But they teased us with that with the Left Behind DLC for the first game, and I thought that that worked completely well. So, yeah, um, the trailer really only gave us ideas of what's happening. It kind of gave us reason to think that they're probably on the move, just like how we see our characters in The Walking Dead, or at least up until the more recent seasons, where they're always on the move. They're always trying to find a new place to call home, a new place to settle down. They're staying at this place for a while until they've used up the resources and have to move somewhere else. So there's an element of that in this new trailer, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, you know, it focuses on Ellie. She's playing guitar. She's got her shaking hands. She starts playing guitar and singing this sad song that sounds very reminiscent of music from the first Last of Us game, which is great. And she's in this house, and then we see what we will soon find out is Joel walking up through the front door, and he's walking by all of these dead bodies, these people that have been killed. They look like people, not cordyceps. I think they were very purposeful in showing us that. And they're dead. There's a dead one in the bathroom. There's a dead one in the floor. There's blood all over the place. Ellie seems like she's covered in pretty fresh blood, probably not her own, of course. And um, so what's going on there? And Joel walks in. He says, what's up with you, kiddo? Just the way he first addresses her feels so natural and right for these characters and how they would talk to each other. And he says, or how you doing, kiddo? Or what are you doing, kiddo? It just was perfect. And um, she stops playing. And she basically, he basically says something to the effect of, are you going to go through with this? And she looks at him the first time we see her face and how much older she is. And she says, I've, I'm going to kill every last one of them. Basically something to that effect. And it ends. So it's conceptual. Obviously, it's something that might not even be in the actual game. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't. Um, early on, when it showed us just a shot of the forest and like a, a derelict road going through a forest, we did see a street sign that had the Fireflies insignia spray painted on that. So that was our first signal of what's going on. So we know we're still with Joel and Ellie. We know that the Fireflies are involved. We're continuing the story and the story beats that ended that game. Whereas we know Ellie was basically lied to by Joel and the Fireflies are being blamed for a lot of things the way the events at the end of that game last played out. I'm still trying to be non-spoilery about it for some reason, but you know, um, they're being painted to be pretty bad people, the Fireflies, and to a large degree, a lot of what they did wasn't good, but they, you could argue that some of what they were trying to do was good. And Ellie, of course, was involved, and Joel made a decision with Ellie at the end by basically freeing her from the Fireflies when maybe he should or should not have done that. That's kind of up to you, the player. Ellie doesn't really know the details, so of course, she's going off of what Joel told her, despite the fact that it was kind of hinted at that uh, she didn't necessarily believe him. And it was a very interesting dynamic. And to see that continuing makes us wonder, well, she obviously still has a grudge to pick with the Firefly. Now, I do like the idea that maybe what she's doing is she's so angry at the Cordyceps and just what's been happening to the world that what she wants to do is just travel the world, destroying all of the Cordyceps, the Cordyceps people, the clickers. Um, but it's probably not that. She's going after the Firefly. And I think that that's a completely legitimate place to take the story and these characters. One of the things I liked too that we saw in the trailer was when we saw her playing guitar, we saw this tattoo covering her arm. And I think it was covering where her initial bite was, the bite that, you know, would have infected her, except that fact that we learned that she can't get infected. I can't remember if that was her right arm or not, but that was definitely the one we saw at the tattoo. So I liked the idea of at some point she'd gotten a tattoo to kind of cover up that mark that signifies that she had been infected yet did not turn. Um, it's kind of more a character-related sort of thing to notice, and I just thought that that was really cool. So either way, we don't know when this game is coming out. The trailer reveal was great. The Last of Us Part Two, that title is perfect to me. It's just the most excellent way to name this game because it could have been like, just The Last of Us 2 would have been like, well, whatever, it's obvious. And, and The Last of Us... Ellie's Revenge or The Story Continues, that kind of subtitle would have been cheesy and obvious and just not 
not unique to The Last of Us, but for some reason, adding just part two really works well, I think, for the tone that the, the now series has set, that that first game has set, and what it looks like the second one is continuing. So we don't know when it's coming out. Um, you know, Neil Druckmann made a public statement, I think, on the PlayStation blog today afterwards, after they revealed the trailer, basically stating that they waited a long time to start this game. They wanted to make sure they had the right story, and for a while they didn't even know if they were going to make it. So a lot of what they've said the last couple of years sounds like it's been true. They haven't been making this since they wrapped up the first one, so they might only be half a year into this game, which means it could be quite a bit, quite far off. Uh, Colin Moriarty on the Kind of Funny Games podcast, who I really like those guys, and I actually do like Colin, he uh, he surmises uh, that it's probably going to be a 2019 game. He does not think that this game could be ready even by 2018. I think it could be ready by 2018, but if they are as fresh into this game as it sounds, I mean, it could be that far. Who even knows? No one knows for sure. They've just given us hints that they only recently started this game, so it's probably going to be... It's definitely going to be 2018, if not 2019. So it'll be interesting to see, but goddamn... I am so freaking excited for The Last of Us Part Dose. So a couple of other things. I just wanted to run through a list of the other things that I thought were noteworthy. Most of it was pretty cool stuff, to be fair. I actually liked some of the announcements that I saw. I guess Naughty Dog opened the show also with an Uncharted DLC brand new episode that doesn't require Uncharted 4 to play. I think that's pretty neat. I'm excited because Uncharted is one of my favorite series, and Uncharted 4 was a masterpiece, in my opinion. So the idea of it continuing with DLC is great. It's single player stuff, not multiplayer. That's awesome. It goes, it has Nadine and Chloe, the long forgotten Chloe, who was like not even in Uncharted 4, which drives me freaking crazy because I love Chloe. She's a thousand times better than Elena. I don't care what anyone says. So to have her coming back in some sort of prequel episode thing for Uncharted 4 is really cool. It'll probably be 15, 20 bucks. Happy to buy it because I love Uncharted. And that's going to be really great. Here's the one other thing I need to spend some time on. So, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was revealed today as well. Crazy exciting. I had no idea that game was coming, so that was very cool. What's interesting is apparently for several days or weeks, all over the internet on NeoGAF and Reddit, and then eventually Polygon, I guess this game had been rumored and talked about. I had no idea that this was coming. So a lot of people were talking about a brand new Marvel vs. Capcom game probably being revealed today, or maybe even at the Game Awards the other day. And so everyone expected this. I did not. So when I saw this news, I was like, whoa, a new Marvel vs. Capcom. Hell yeah, I cannot wait for that. Um, so the interesting part to what's going on with this game that has not yet been confirmed as far as I know is that the idea might be that what they're doing with this game is focusing solely on the MCU film universe and nothing else. And that initially might sound kind of cool because it's like, oh, they want to build on all the stuff happening in the movies right now because it's so popular and mix that with Capcom characters. That sounds great. And it does until you realize what that means, which means no Fox characters because Fox film rights are different than Marvel Film Studios film rights, which means no X-Men. And that's a problem for myriad reasons. One is the X-Men characters are a staple to the Marvel vs. Capcom video game series just flat out. That's where we, we have seen them in that series since its inception. The other reason is the X-Men are an incredibly huge, important staple for the Marvel Universe, not the movie universe, the actual Marvel Universe that exists on comic and printed paper. The X-Men are huge. In fact, the X-Men even have a lot to do with the Avengers storyline, but they just can't be involved in the films because the film rights are separate, which sucks, but is also okay at the same time. Um, the other reason I don't like this news is because I happen to just be an X-Men fanboy. I love the X-Men. I love those characters. I think that Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is the best and most important comic book character we've ever seen on screen. I love Storm. She's always been my favorite X-Men. I think Professor X is very important. Magneto is hugely important. So I just hate to see that they might, might, this is not confirmed, might be splitting up what they're doing with the game, the Marvel vs. Capcom game, by splitting up the Fox movie rights characters with the Marvel movie rights characters, which is stupid. Mostly because they don't have to do this. Like, Marvel themselves, if they wanted to just make the best Marvel vs. Capcom game that they could make, they would just allow any potential X-Men characters or Fantastic Four characters into this game just like they always did. By doing it this way, they're making a different kind of business decision to focus on the movie stuff and try to make really 
I don't know, I don't know what word to use, but lazy money off of what's already successful in Hollywood, and that's not true to the vision of the Marvel vs. Capcom series and video games, and it's not true to the Marvel comic universe, which is what's supposed to be embodied in this series. So, long story short, there's a whole bunch of jumbled mess happening here. It's not confirmed, which is very nice, but I'm not going to lie, it all kind of sounds true. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous that it's going to be true, and I think it's going to be to the humongous detriment of the game that could otherwise have been fantastic. They did show Captain Marvel showing up in the trailer, which is great because we haven't seen her in any of these games yet, and we know that there's a movie coming out um, in the next couple of years in the MCU for Captain Marvel, which is going to be awesome. So that's A, great for the game, but B, a potential sign that they're focusing on the MCU and not the whole Marvel, com not the whole Marvel comic universe, if I could even speak, like they should. Beyond that, the last couple of things I wanted to run by you guys, they did announce uh, Nino Kuni 2. I think that might have already been previously announced, but they discussed it and showed off a trailer, which is cool. Never played the original Level 5 game. My younger brother loves it. People loved it. So I'm curious about Nino Kuni 2, but I doubt I'll ever get to it. Parappa the Rappa Remaster. Oh my freaking God. Hell yes. Kick punch. It's all in the mind. I am all about Parappa the Rappa coming back. I wish it was a new game. But you know what? We live in Remaster Central nowadays anyway, so it is what it is. That's fine. Um, the Crash Remaster looks awesome. I'm very excited for what they're doing there. It does look pretty clean. Something else that kind of funny guys um, pointed out on their podcast today. It does look almost a little bit too clean. Some of the, uh, I don't know, the organic uniqueness and original personality of the graphics is kind of lost with how much they've polished it. But, I mean, that's really a weird thing to complain about. It looks gorgeous. Uh, I think they've reimagined a lot of the structure of the levels. They've added analog stick support. So there's a bunch of cool things happening there. And I love to see Naughty Dog doing something with Crash, even if it is just a remaster. So I'm very excited for that. Wipeout Collection was added, uh, or was announced today, sorry. And I'm very excited for that because I loved Wipeout just like I loved F-Zero. And I'm really happy to see that coming back, even if it is more remastered stuff. Pretty cool because they're old games. Knack 2 apparently was announced. I have yet to see the trailer or anything on this. I barely even caught that Knack 2 was announced. I did not ever see a sequel to that game coming. So even though the first game was bad, it's like I'm really curious about this because if they could take that game and make it good, it speaks to all the fundamentals I like out of like a lot of Nintendo games and Banjo-Kazooie and Mario games, like a colorful platforming adventure. I mean, bring it on. If you make it good, I'm down. The first one was bad, but hey, maybe they make Knack 2 pretty good. That would be great. Um, the last thing is they announced an update for the Resident Evil 7 demo that's going to be available tonight, and you bet your ass I'm going to be playing it, for sure with my girlfriend, because we love that stuff, loved the demo so far, can't wait for the final game, so I thought it was pretty cool that they announced a brand new update, I love what they're doing, how they're rolling out new content in demo form for this game leading up to its release in like a month and a half, oh my god, I can't even wait, um, so all pretty cool stuff, and you know what? I should take note of the fact that there was a lot of Vita-related announcements today. Um, nothing like, as far as I know, no new Vita games. No Vita games that are like brand new exclusive Vita-only games. But some of the remasters and ports and things um, are coming also to Vita. So there was like five or six, a handful of, of titles announced today that are also coming to the PlayStation Vita. And I think that's significant because we know that Sony has all but abandoned the PlayStation Vita. And to see them showing, showing some kind of support at the end, the ass end of 2016 for games that will come out in 2017 is a pretty big deal. Obviously, it can't compete with the 3DS, and it sure as shit ain't gonna be competing with the Switch once that comes out. But you know what? Sony made a neat little device that sadly people didn't buy, and I think it's cool that they're gonna support it for just, you know, another year. Anywho, for the most part, that's the goods. It was really The Last of Us Part Two that I wanted to discuss with you guys in my excitement for it, kind of talk about what I noticed in the trailer, and touch on some of the other neat things happening. The Uncharted DLC and Marvel vs. Capcom are the most interesting and exciting to me. All I can hope, hope and pray, is that we learn that they're doing the right things with Marvel vs. Capcom, and I'll be a happy camper. I'll be a happy Rob if they include my X-Men in our Marvel vs. Capcom game like they're supposed to be. Also, fuck yes for The Last of Us Part Two. Oh my god, so excited. I didn't see this coming. This is the absolute best announcement I could have gotten in video games today next to a brand new Metroid, and I think that's going to come in the next year of my life. <laughs> so right now, while I wait for a new Metroid, a sequel to The Last of Us is everything else I could have possibly wanted. So... PSX was pretty interesting. I don't know, again, how the show played out. I don't know anything else that's happening, but this list of announcements 
and the reveal of The Last of Us Part 2 is pretty exciting to me, and if anything, it's also pretty interesting. So, what did you guys think? Are you pumped for The Last of Us 2 like I am? Did you play the first game? Did you not play the first game? Did you hate the first game so you don't care about the sequel? Or do you think the sequel is going to be the holy grail of video games until Metroid and Zelda come out? Because that's kind of what I think it's going to be. What did you guys think of PSX this year? Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule of Review, and I, of course, will catch you next time on another video.